You guys know that I always struggle a little bit in winter with depression. And the last couple of years it's been coupled with anxiety because of my PhD. <laughs> now that my PhD is over, I actually don't really feel anxious very often, which is fantastic. However, my depression is still definitely present, especially when the days become shorter, it's less sunny. I definitely notice my mood drop a lot. So one thing that I've tried to implement this month is walking more. So I try and get out and go for a walk a few times a week. A really decent like 45 to an hour even sometimes walk and I incentivize it by taking along my keep cup and grabbing a drink while I'm out as well <laughs> so it's got like a, a goal at the end of the walk so I'm gonna do that first thing this morning before I even like do all my proper skincare and shower and makeup and everything they'll just pop on a little bit of sunscreen which I can't actually talk to you about yet because I'm gonna do a video on my skincare routine in a few weeks so stay tuned but first things first is to get dressed. Even though it is gorgeous and sunny in here this morning. Today, it'll be raining with a forecast high of 11 and a low of seven. It feels like it's six. Which is quite cold. I'm gonna put on my puffy seed vest over top as well. It also says there's a very cold wind. So I've put on this little like ear warmer thing from Forever New that I got a while back. And I'm gonna wear my sunglasses because it's quite sunny out. Last thing to do is just to grab my keep cup. And if you watch my weekly vlogs, you would have heard me talking about this before. This is a keep cup from Robin Gordon Pottery. This is one of my favorites of the month. It's a 100% like ceramic keep cup. So the top as well is also ceramic. It's not plastic. So it doesn't taste like plastic when you are drinking out of it, which is my biggest pet peeve with keep cups. But I'm really trying to reduce my waste. So if I can take this, it means that I can get a takeaway drink and I can walk around and enjoy my nice hot drink, but not create extra waste for the landfill. Today I grabbed a coconut milk turmeric latte, which is very nice. Alrighty, I just got out of the shower, which was so nice because it was so cold out and I probably wasn't quite wearing enough clothes. Like in reality, I should have worn my sleeping bag coat because it's not like I was running. I was just walking, but it was freezing. <laughs> when I was down on the beach and I had to put my hood up, I felt like I looked like the little kid in the back of the car in love actually. My shower was very nice and I stayed in there a bit longer than I necessarily needed to just to like warm up and I can feel all my insides all nice and warm again. But moving on to beauty favourites, my favourite foundation this month I think would have to be MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10 because my skin has been a little bit oilier and a lot more problematic. This is a product that I know doesn't break me out. I know it works really well on my skin, it gives me good coverage, it's got good longevity. It's the kind of foundation I go back to when my skin is just being awful because I know that it won't aggravate my skin anymore and then I can try and figure out what is. <laughs> Even though NC10 is meant to be warm toned, I wouldn't say it's a warm toned foundation, I'd say it's a neutral, like it's very much just in the middle, beige, not very yellow, not very pink or anything, it's just really nice. So that has been a good favourite of mine again. Right, I've just put on the rest of my face makeup. If you're interested, I might as well quickly whip through what I use because I'll get questions. Tarte Shape Tape on my blemishes and I set it with the Derma Blend powder, the Marc J. Jacob's Tantastic Bronzer, this Sugar Ball Cushion Cheek Color in number five, and my little Savvy Baked Highlighter in Pure Pearl, which is so beautiful. This is a dupe for MAC Double Glam, by the way, if you're in Australia. I wouldn't put those products necessarily in my favorites because I haven't really used them that consistently throughout the month. They're just ones that I decided to grab out today. But these next two products I've probably used nearly the entire month. If you watched my Canadian makeup play date that I did a couple of weeks ago, you would have seen me using these, and I was using them for a couple of weeks before then and I have not really stopped since. They're just so good and I'm sure I will run out of this pencil very soon. This is the Marcel Nano Eyebrow Liner so it's a tiny little micro brow pencil. This is in the shade Fair Ash Blonde. The colour is just so good. It matches my brow hairs pretty much exactly and I actually don't like to darken my brows too much these days. I prefer a more sort of a natural brow or a brow that's actually slightly lighter than like my roots. Well especially because my hair is wet right now. It looks really dark. I had a lovely subscriber send this to me so it's how I got my hands on it but it's very similar to the BH Cosmetics one which I also love so that would be what I'd recommend if you can't get your hands on this guy. And then to set my brows I've been using the Marcel Perfect Brow Gel and this is in the 
shade light to medium. This has a very teeny, teeny, tiny little wand on it, which gives me so much control. It's very good at building volume in the brows. It's got a lot of kind of pigment and, I don't know, sort of grippy ability. <laughs> so you can really like push your brows up. And then my last makeup favorite for the month has been a lip liner, which is so unusual for me because I'm not a lip liner person. I think this is now my only one. Spoiler alert from my lipstick declutter, which will come up in about probably a month and a half, to be honest. I'm pre-filming while I'm away. I think this is the only lip liner I ended up keeping out of all of them because the others are just not the right color. So it's the Essence Draw The Line Instant Color Lip Liner in the shade So Ungrateful. So it's actually kind of a mauve -y sort of color because my lips naturally are a little bit more of a cooler tone, slightly mauve shade naturally. It actually looks really, how many times can I say natural? <laughs> It looks really natural when I use it, very light handed. And then I'll put on like a lip gloss or at the moment I've been using a lip balm just to kind of add a bit of a gloss. And it's been making my lips just look a lot more sort of like structured. Um, I do overline slightly on the top lip just to kind of balance my lips because my bottom lip is a little bit bigger, but I don't like go crazy or anything. So I'll just put a little bit of that on. You can see it's just defined my lip line a bit more. And then I'll grab some lip balm. This is just the Clavu one. I mentioned this on my last um, favorites video, actually. I've just put in my Aveda styling products. I use the Damage Remedy Daily Hair Repair. So this is like a heat protectant sort of thing and the thickening tonic. I wouldn't necessarily say these are like favorite favorites from the month. They've just been products I've been using and enjoying. But something that kind of blew me away <laughs> was this bad boy. This is one of those hair drying hair brushes. I ordered this online not realizing it was the replica version of what everyone else seems to be using. Turns out everyone's using the Revlon one from memory but we can't buy that here but this looks identical it seems to work absolutely fine i will try and link the the actual proper one down below because i'm not sure how much i'd recommend ordering a replica appliance i was a bit scared to use it because i was like is it gonna blow my house up i would just wish that i could have bought the like proper proper one because i don't agree with like replicas but that aside the actual idea of a hair drying hair brush has kind of changed my hair game completely i cannot do the whole round brush with hair dryer thing that they do at the salon. Like I cannot give myself a good blow dry to save my life. I'm usually the type that's like head upside down, like just trying to get it dry so then I can go through with my straightener and sleek it out that way. But that's kind of like double effort. So I've really been enjoying this and I'm going to use that now. So that is what it looks like when it's done and it looks as if I went to the salon. <laughs> Would highly recommend it if you are like me and you suck at trying to give yourself a good blow wave. My favorite tea this month has for sure been this little one here, the Harney and Sons Victorian London Fog, which is an Earl Grey tea. I was very kindly gifted this from a subscriber a while ago and I've been trying to use up some of my other tea before I delved into this but I wish I had not waited so long because it is absolutely beautiful like it's such a nice quality tea then I just put in a little bit of milk that's why it's called a London fog I'm also gonna have that with another one of my favorites these cookies in my lovely new cookie jar. I actually made these and they are the Betty Crocker chocolate chip cookie mix. They're really good. It's so simple. If I want to whip up a batch of cookies, I can literally mix up the ingredients in about five minutes, roll them up and put them on a tray, get them in the oven that takes a couple of minutes and then it's like done. Like it's so easy and then you get these fresh baked cookies. And like I leave for Perth for tomorrow, so I should probably eat these up today. But the best way to have them obviously is straight out of the oven but you can freshen them up and make them feel like they're fresh out of the oven by putting them in the microwave for 15 seconds that is the perfect amount of time they don't get too hot and melty but they're just soft and it just feels like they've come out of the oven they've sat there for like five minutes and then you eat one perfect so i'm gonna eat this 
drink my tea and chat to you guys about a few of my life's favorites. I watched a show earlier this month called Dead to You. It's on Netflix and I binged it one day when I was having a not so good day and just wanted to blob around home and yeah, <laughs> it was one of those days. Just so addictive. It was like one of those shows where you just have to keep watching the next one. You guys know that my taste in TV shows, I typically love like, yeah, Game of Thrones, fantasy shows, sort of things like that. But this I actually really enjoyed. Basically the premise of it is that this woman's husband's died and she's dealing with the post death grief. She meets this girl that's like overly friendly to her at this like a grief support group and it's just kind of the relationship between her and this girl throughout the whole show it's just i kind of can't say too much without giving it away but it's very good like it's a well done show and i'm very excited if they bring out hopefully another season because it was kind of left on a bit of a cliffhanger i never used to be like the biggest cookie person either growing up i was all about like cakes biscuits were just kind of like something that you got put in your lunch and you might eat it or you might not but now i cannot think of anything better sweet wise to eat than a cookie like a big chocolate chip cookie now, if you are a regular watcher of my vlogs, I can't really have a May favourite without Game of Thrones, right? It takes over my life. <laughs> Whenever there's a season out, it literally takes over my life. This was the final one, so it was ultra bittersweet. That was very much what the ending was like anyway. It was definitely a bittersweet ending to the show, but also just like, I was so torn. I felt such sadness that it ended but I was also like pleased to see the end of the show in a way like I was pleased to see the story where it went to and I'm gonna miss it so much. I actually just read on Twitter and I tweeted about it that Kit Harrington has been going through a really rough time post the show ending and like I could not be more understanding of that and the headlines are all like he's checked into rehab like typical let's shame celebrities for going through rough times i hate that i hate tabloid culture kit harrington has just finished 10 year project that is like on the world's biggest show with a character that is so deep and he felt so connected to it and it was it was who he was it, it like formed his identity for 10 years of course he's gonna have like a quarter life crisis when he comes out of that and i felt a very similar sense of loss and grief when i finished my phd and it's definitely contributed to me feeling quite low mood over the last few months and especially without Alex here like I had no support only thing is that I think I had done a lot of reading and expected it would happen I don't know I went into it quite prepared that I was going to really struggle I think at least it wasn't a surprise to me it was just like here we go feeling flat you know but my PhD only took four years like Kit's been working on the show for so long on top of that it's a very public creative endeavor and I can only imagine that the really harsh critique that the show has had for this last season has probably also contributed to him feeling really broken inside and oh I just feel for him so much there's a documentary actually out about the filming of season eight and it showed that all the behind the scenes of the show and it was a really unique perspective because it wasn't focusing too much on the main characters it actually focused a lot on the minor characters particularly this one stark soldier i can't remember his name i recognized his face a lot like every time he would be around i'd be like what's oh, that guy again like he had a very recognizable face so he actually wasn't so much of a red shirt after all he was kind of a recognizable extra like basically a character in his own right but just didn't have any speaking roles but they did show like kit's reaction to finding out about his season eight plot you could say at the table read and it was just pretty just watching him get all teary and upset about it and I was like <laughs> they also filmed him on his last day and he's actually like crying saying how much it's mean to him and I I was like crying my eyes out watching it like he seems like such a beautiful person I really do wish him all the best I really hope that this time that he's taking for his self-care I hope he comes out of it feeling much better and more positive about life and realize that the show doesn't define him because that's the hardest thing when I stopped being a PhD student it was really hard to know what am I who am I it's the kind of feeling you go through when you finish a giant project it's really hard it's probably the worst idea to try and eat a cookie while talking to you guys I can't actually eat it and talk at the same time and my last favorite a big milestone that I hit recently it was on Sunday night, all my girls were here. If you watched my last weekly vlog, you would have seen all my work wives came around, I hosted a dinner. And that night, I actually hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, which is super exciting. Obviously, the number itself is a really cool, just like milestone to hit. It just looks nice on the profile. And I feel like definitely brands take you a little bit more seriously when you've got that double digit. And 
probably my favorite thing is that I get a swipe up feature in the stories now so I can actually like let you guys know about when videos go live but also include a link a little swipe up link to the video because in the past I'd always be like go to my channel and it was like such a roundabout way to like show you guys that I've got a new video out now I can just link it it's gonna be so good but if you haven't had a chance to check out my Instagram definitely pop over it's just at Anna Elaine as is my Twitter as well I'm quite active on Twitter but that's pretty much it for my May favourites. Quite a big month, as I said. I had a lot to... Oh no, I forgot one. I forgot one thing. <laughs> this beauty is my favourite plant of the month. This is a fern. I think it's an emperor fern from memory, or an emerald fern. One of those two. I got this plant pot at a local, like, a bargain shop, you could say. I actually bought my friend a slightly smaller size version of this um, for her birthday last year. I was so tempted to get myself one at the time and I didn't and then I went back to the plant shop to buy one for myself and they had sold out and they didn't have any more like for months on end I kept popping in to check and they wouldn't have any more and I was like <laughs> resigned myself to the fact that I had missed out and then I just randomly stumbled across him and he's a little bit bigger which is handy because he actually fits this plant specific plant really well and I just think he looks so cute <laughs> so I need to name him put some possible name ideas in the description because he, he's so new he doesn't have a name thank you so so much for tuning in and for watching and for sticking around for this quite long favorites video my next non vloggy video after this is my next declutter which is palettes Again, another video you guys are really keen for. I got some rid of 70% of my palettes in that declutter. So you definitely want to tune in and see which ones made the cut. So once again, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. And have a great week. Bye.